Hey guys, welcome to interlocking crochet. So the one thing that you need to know about interlocking crochet, it's not rocket science. It's actually super easy. Once you get your head around the concept, um, you will wonder how you did any other kind of crochet, to be honest. I absolutely love interlocking crochet. It is my go-to crochet method now. It is the only crochet method I design in. It is the only one that I do. It is the only one that I dream of, sleep on, um, eat, everything. Everything about me right now is interlocking crochet. Um, interlocking crochet basically is the connection of two meshes of made up of double crochets and one chain that are interlocked in order to create a picture. And your picture is either created by lines, which you would see over here or there, or it is created by solid stitching. And we will be going through all of these over the next couple of videos. Like I said, once you know how to do the, once you know the basis or the basics of interlocking, you can do any pattern um, because the concept remains the same. So let's get going with interlocking 101. So interlocking fillet crochet. One thing that needs to be understood about this technique is that it really only comprises of two fillet meshes that are uh, connected to each other to form a picture. So I am going to talk you through the basics and hopefully it will help you to get started. It is a very addictive technique. Um, so don't blame me afterwards if you're running to the yarn shop for all sorts of colors for your patterns. Um, one thing that you need to remember is when choosing colors for interlocking, you need two very contrasting colors. So the first thing is the colors have to be contrasting and they mustn't be the same hue. And what I mean by that is that it cannot be, um, colors that are close in, in, um, so look at this, this is pink and brown, but because the brown has a pink tint, the pink, it, it doesn't stand out well. It just does not contrast very well. If it was pink and chocolate brown, it would have been much, much better. Okay. Um, this is an example of green and white, but because the green is so light, the mint green is so, so light, you cannot actually see the picture form. So you need two very contrasting colors. And the way to achieve that is to really just look at the color wheel, uh, choose a warm color with a light color, uh, sorry, a warm color with a cool color. Um, yeah, you can pretty much do anything. The other thing that you could do is choose two colors from the same color family, but on opposite ends of it. So in this case, this is a purple with a very light lilac and you get a beautiful contrast. Can you see that? My go-tos are actually um, patterns or my, or my color go-tos are ones where I'm using white or oatmeal or natural and I then use it with a darker color. That's my, that's a safe bet. Um, yeah. So let's get going. So the two meshes are created by having a main color and a, a contrast color. Okay. So how do you know which one's your main color? Your main color is the color that forms the picture. It forms the line on the front of the work. So the main color or the color A is therefore the color that you will start with. The color B or the contrasting color is the other color. In this case, it would be the white. One other thing you need to remember about the yarns that you choose, you cannot use yarns that split. It's going to make it very, very difficult for you to do this technique. Your yarns must have a good twist. My favorite go-to yarns are the Catania yarns um, that are 100% uh, moisturized cotton or Ecofusion, which is a cotton bamboo blended yarn. I have it in mind to try the Stylecraft Naturals bamboo cotton um, blend, 
which is a double knit, but it's quite a thin double knit. So I, I have a project in mind for this, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that, with that idea. But the, the main thing is that you cannot use yarns that split. Okay. The other thing about interlock and crochet patterns, remember that you don't need to know how to read the graph. The graph is written out for you. The instructions are written out for you by the designer. Every row has an A and a B to it, like I've said before. That refers to your color A and your color B. So let's get going and then um, you can just follow along. I'll give you more notes as we go. So like I said, these patterns are written out for you and we're just going to do a sample of a little pot holder. This is a tutorial video, not a project video. So I, although I am using an actual pattern just to give you the basic idea of interlocking. Okay, so row 1A, it's telling you, so when it's 1A, in an A row, you're using your main color. And you can choose which your main color is, it, it doesn't matter. It's telling you to chain 54 with your main color. Okay, and so we're going to do that. One of the things that I like to do here is to whip out my stitch markers because they are little lifesavers when it comes to this part of it. Okay, so every time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On every tenth chain, I will place a stitch marker and I will show you in a bit the method to the madness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I want you to just go ahead and do your 54 chain, placing a stitch marker in every tenth chain. And I will meet you at the end. Right. Okay, so now we've got our 54 chain and there is a stitch marker placed in every ten. So you can see it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 54. Okay. So the stitch sequence for fillet crochet is one double crochet, one chain, skip a stitch. That is the stitch sequence. It is most, or in fact, all um, of these patterns are written in US terminology. So we're now going to do the patterns telling us, starting in the sixth chain from the hook, do one double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch and we're going to do the 24 times so here's my little trick with the stitch markers so it's yarn over you're going to go one two three four five is where the stitch marker is number six is the very next chain after the stitch marker after the first stitch marker you're going to do a double crochet in there chain one now you're going to skip a chain or skip a stitch and then do a double crochet, chain one, yarn over, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one, yarn over, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. Now you will see that this double crochet, the last one I did just before this second stitch marker, where the stitch marker is, the stitch is going to be skipped. And that's the trick to using the stitch markers on the first mesh, is that wherever there is a stitch marker, you should know that that's, that stitch is automatically skipped. It's just the maths of it, it's the logic of it, it helps though, because if you make a mistake, if for some reason you either didn't skip a chain here or you skip two chains and you then end up stitching into where there is a stitch marker on any one of these, then you know that you've gone wrong. And by leaving the stitch markers in place, you only have to then unpick or undo a small section of your work. And this works whether you put the stitch marker in every 10, every 20, every 50, if you're doing a long chain foundation, it doesn't matter. The logic still works. Okay, so it's yarn over, skip a stitch, 
And you'll see now when I get to this stitch marker, what happens. So I'm skipping where that stitch marker is. Chain one, yarn over, skip a stitch, double crochet. Let me just get some more yarn going here. I'm not a pink person. I don't know why I chose all this pink yarn. Okay. So yarn over, skip a stitch, and my next double crochet is right before the chain where there is the second stitch marker. And that's going to happen every single time. And like I said earlier, if you've made a mistake, you only are going to have to unpick between two stitch markers, the area between two stitch markers. And you will know that you've made that mistake because the double crochet will end up where the stitch marker is. So you go ahead and do your double crochets and your chain ones, remembering to skip a stitch and I will meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so now we've done our double crochets. So remember the pattern tells you to do your double crochet, chain one and skip one 24 times. So obviously depending on what pattern you're doing, that number will change as will your chain foundation. In this case, we're just doing a little sample of a pot holder. Okay, so we've done it 24 times now and we can count them. We don't count, so you don't count this loop over here you count from your first double crochet. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You will see that you will have two chain left at the end. Okay. And the pattern is telling you that you're in the last chain, you're going to do one double crochet. So, after your 24th double crochet, your chain one, you're going to yarn over, skip the second last chain, and in the last chain, you're going to do a double crochet. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your first mesh done. With interlocking crochet, you should do four chain at the end of every single row. It's your turning chain. It helps you to turn to the next row. I don't like the four chain because I find that the gap on my border is just a little bit too big for my liking. So I do a three chain at the end of my, of my meshes. So you're going to chain three. I also like to do them right at the end of the row and not at the beginning of the new row just because it's it's preference there's no rule about that you can choose when you want to do it so i've done my three chain and then to just keep it all together and in place because i'm going to set this aside now i'm just putting a stitch marker there so that my stitches don't come undone i'm now going to set this one aside and i'm going to pick up my color b i'm picking up my color b because it now refers to row 1B, which is my contrasting color. And in 1B, I am told I have to chain 52. Now, question, why is that foundation chain less than this foundation chain? It is so that the two meshes can interlock. You will see the logic in this in a moment. So let's go ahead and chain 52 with our color B, and I will meet you at the end of your chain. Also remember, sorry, also remember that when you're doing this chain, also put in a stitch marker after every 10th chain that you do. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. And we're going to put a stitch marker in every 10th one. And we're going to do this for 52 chain and I'll meet you at the end of it. Right, so now we've got our 52 chain on our color B. Now we have to connect this 
to our color A mesh, which we did a few minutes ago. Okay. The instruction on the pattern will tell you to lay your chain over the trellis and you're going to work. So let's just do this slowly. Okay. Let me just move this out the way so that you can actually get a clear picture of what this is now going to look like. You're going to lay, that's your color A mesh. Okay, you can see that your, your three chain is at the top of your work, not at the bottom, not like that, because then you're turning it upside down. It has to be at the top of your work. These are your stitch markers that helped you when you were um, doing your double crochets. And in fact, you can actually now remove them Otherwise, they're actually just going to get in the way. So that's what your mesh looks like. Okay. This is your color B chain. This chain is going to lay over the top of your mesh. Now, this is a little trick that I teach my students to do, the new ladies who've never touched interlocking before in their lives. You're gonna be working, as per the pattern it says, working through the sixth chain from the hook of the color B and through the second window of color A. What do I mean by window? All of these gaps, these one chain spaces are windows. In this particular example, there are 25 of them we are going to be working through the second one when we start. You're going to take your mesh, sorry, your chain. You're going to count the sixth chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to take a stitch marker. You're going to place the stitch marker at the bottom of that chain loop and you're going to connect it to that second window. Now this is a good trick for beginners. Once you get used to interlocking, you don't do this anymore. You can literally do this blind. Um, but for beginners, people who are not yet that confident, it's nice to just take the stitch marker and connect the chain to that window. You're going to do it for a few of them. So you're going to connect one, skip one, connect another one. So I'm going to do it for a few of them just so that you can see Skip a chain, you see there, skip a chain, connect the next one to the next window. You literally are just going through the bottom loop of the chain and into the window itself. Okay, don't use the top loop of the chain on the B color because you need to actually get your hook in there and the stitch marker is going to get in the way. So why do we do this? Because often beginners get confused about skipping the chain and it gets all twist and tangled this way you actually are you you're creating little landmarks for yourself as to where your hook should go okay we're going to do the next one now remember i told you earlier when you did your first mesh where there's a stitch marker this one where there's a stitch marker, that one is normally skipped. The same concept applies when you're doing the connections. Where these stitch markers are, the ones where you put in every 10 when you were doing the chain, there should never be a stitch in there. It's always a skip stitch, whether it is your A color or your B color. When you're connecting these two, um, these two pieces of work, there must never be a stitch stitched into where there's a stitch marker. I'm going to do one more and then we're going to crochet them together. Okay. So we're leaving our tail of our color B to one side because in interlocking you only ever work with one color at a time. Unless you get a design where there's multiple colors being used and that's a different story for another day. Okay. So now your stitch markers are in place. There's actually no reason for you to count now. So you're going to yarn over, same principle applies, you yarn over. 
If you look at the pattern, we're bringing the pattern back in. If you look at the pattern, it says working through the second color A window, which we've now connected the, the sixth chain of color B to the second window of color A. It says B23 F1. Now, what does that mean? What language is this? Foreign languages. Okay, so one thing you need to remember about interlocking. There is a difference between front of the work, as in front facing, as in right side, and wrong side of the work, back of the work, um, wrong side of the work, whatever you want to call it. There's a difference between those concepts and back stitch and front stitch. Now, when I say back stitch and front stitch, if you're a seasoned crocheter, I'm not talking about back post or front post double crochets here. Forget about that. It's not used in interlocking. Back stitch and front stitch refers to the pushing forward, sorry, the pulling forward or the pushing back of the stitch in order to create the picture. So what is B23? B, back stitch, 23 times. F, front stitch, one time. Okay, this is how it's done. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to insert the hook. You're doing a back stitch now from the back of the window, so the back of color A's window, you're gonna pull a loop where that stitch marker is that's indicating of color B. You're going to pull the loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. We'll do that again, yarn over. We're doing a back stitch. Coming through the back of the window, pull the loop, of the chain to the back, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. And again, very slowly, yarn over, coming through the back of the window because we're doing a back stitch, pull the chain through to the back. You, basically, what you're doing is you're forcing the chain to the back. Okay, we're going to do it again. Yarn over. And remember, we're, we're actually automatically skipping that one stitch on the chain because on the, on, the, on the foundation chain of color B, because our stitch markers have been put in place already, so we don't need to think about it. I'm just going to remove these stitch markers now and we will see the work. So you can see that in that section, color B is now connected to color A. The meshes are being interlinked or locked, okay? Remember this little purple stitch marker from counting out 52? He doesn't get stitched into because he is a skip stitch. Okay, so we'll just keep him to the side. This green stitch marker is where we're stitching again, so it's yarn over, coming through the back of the window, pull up the loop to the back, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. And we'll do it again. I'm going to do these without stitch markers in place. Yarn over, skip a stitch. Yarn over through the back of the window, pull him through, pull the loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. And again, yarn over through the back of the window, now you can connect these the stitch markers every single time until you get used to the technique where you're just placing the stitch marker into the chain and connecting 
into the window before you actually crochet the stitch. It does make your life so much easier, especially, like I said, if you're a beginner. Oh, sorry. Just yarn over, insert the hook through the back of the window, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. So go ahead and do that, and I am going to meet you at the end um, of the connection. Just make sure that you have 23 backstitch double crochets. You will have a window left at the end, and you will have two chain left on your B color. I will meet you there and show you what to do. Okay, so now we have 23 double crochets. If you want to check that, remember you don't count that loop, that loop over there. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And you have two chain left on your color B, and you've got one window open on your color A. Okay, so what do we do with that? Remember our F1 on the pattern? So now we're going to do a front stitch. And really, back stitches and front stitches is all that interlocking is actually really made up of. Okay, it is not difficult. Yarn over. We're going to do a front stitch. Now, the, the chain is already lying to the front of the work. Okay, so you literally, you're not going to come through the back of the window. You're going to come over the top of the window. But be careful. Don't do this. Let's see if I can make this mistake deliberately. Don't do that. Don't catch the chain and the window at the same time. That is wrong. You don't want to lock it like that. Okay, you're not going to be a, your work will be wrong. You will have to unpick. You're going to yarn over. You're only coming through the chain. Do your double crochet. You can see that they're not connected, but that is actually correct in this scenario. Okay, and in fact, most patterns, you will have this at the end of the first row. Right, again, remember, we spoke about the three chain at the end. You can do four chain if you want to, which is the norm, but I like three chain at the end. This applies to your color B as well. So it's one, two, three chain, and I like to put a stitch marker there just so it doesn't come undone. Right, so this is row 1A. Oops, there goes the stitch markers. This is row 1A and 1B connected to each other. I'm just removing these unnecessary stitch markers now. There we go. That is row 1A and 1B done. Now in interlocking crochet, you do turn your work, hence the turning chain at the end. So now we're going to go to row two. In a moment, don't worry about all the drama that's going on on this pattern, but in a moment, I'm going to also show you how to read the pattern, show you every aspect of the pattern. And this would apply to my patterns and some of the other designers who design, we design in a similar way. Um, it would apply to their patterns as well. But let's, we, we're just dealing with my patterns right now. Okay, so you're going to start row two. Now row two is an even numbered row. All even numbered rows is the wrong side facing of your work. Interlocking crochet has a right side facing and they have, a, and it has a wrong side facing. Even numbers refer to the wrong side of the work. Okay. In your on your even numbered rows, your color B, your contrasting color, must always be lying. If I'm going to try to get this into focus, must always be lying to the back of the work. Can you see that the green is lying behind the pink? Now that applies always. There is no scenario where it's the other way around. If it's the other way around, it means that you did not end the preceding row correctly, okay? So we always start with our color A first, which means we're now going to start with our pink. So just removing the stitch marker and looking at my pattern. Like I said in the beginning, we're not going to be finishing this pattern. 
we're just doing this as a technique sample. Okay, so now we're going to start row 2a. This is, like I said before, the wrong side of the work. And we're going to be working with color A. Color A is telling us to do a back stitch for front stitches. So how do we do this? So it's yarn over. You're going to work through the back of the B window, pull the stitch to the back, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do a couple of back stitches. We're not going to follow the pattern exactly. I'm just going to do a couple of B stitches so that you can understand this. Okay, chain one always, unless told otherwise, but you chain one always. So because the color B, remember with interlocking crochet, you're only ever working color B into color B, color A into color A. You're never working, let's say, the pink into the green or the green into the pink. It is always pink into pink, green into green, A into A, B into B. So if you were doing lots of back stitches, it's yarn over. Now, because the pink is already, the color B is already at the back of the work, you actually don't need to go through a window on this side. So you just do it like a normal double crochet. Okay, these are normal double crochets. And always chain one after each one. And you're working into, remember I said, don't think of these as front post and back post stitches. You're working into the top of the double crochet. Now, oh, I forgot my chain one. Hold on a second. Okay. Chain one. It is very easy, by the way, to forget to do the chain one. Okay. Let's assume we had to do front stitches. Now the pink is not lying to the front. The pink is lying to the back. So now that means we have to go through a window. So you're going to, in order to do a front stitch, you're going to go through the green window, pull him to the back, and do your double crochet. I'll do that again. Yarn over, in, and I like to say, you pop, sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, let's try this one more time. Yarn over. I like to say that you need to pop the color out of the window. If you're doing a front stitch, it's best to. So I take my, my finger and I push him towards me so that it pops. It's easier to do this, to do it this way, than trying to go and fetch it. Push it out towards you. It's much easier. Okay. Because when you go and fetch it, you could twist the stitch. So some people do, um, some people do this and they twist the stitch. It's easier to just pop it out, put the hook underneath. Okay, those are front stitches. We're going to do some more. Let's do some back stitches. So it's yarn over. Do some back stitches now. And remember, we're not actually following the pattern in front of me. We're just doing ob stitches, just random back and front stitches so that you can get used to the technique. We can talk about the pattern in a little bit, but for now it's just about practicing stitches. Okay, these are all back stitches. And it is always chain one after every double crochet. Never forget the chain one. I'll say that a million times, you'll hear me say it in this video, because it is so easy to forget that. Okay, 
those are back stitches. You can see I just literally pushed this mesh forward so that I could work on the in, into those double crochets on the other side of the work. That's also be an easy way to do it. We're going to do some front stitches again. So we're going to push that forward so we can pop him out. Just think of it as popping. And we're going to yarn over, pop him out, and work the front stitch double crochet, yarn over and pop, and okay, yarn over and pop. Right now. We're at the end of the row. There's one double crochet left and then there's this little loop. Okay, so let's first work the double crochet. We're going to work a back stitch. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull him to the back. Now, what do we do about this little loop? This little loop on the A color is what forms your outside border. Let me just put a marker there so you can see him clearly. That forms your outside border. It needs to be worked into so that your border can run up your work. Okay. So how is that interpreted on the pattern? On the pattern, <clears throat> and different designers use different terminology for this. I use the terminology OBS, outside border stitch. Okay. The outside border stitch is only ever worked on the A color. It is never worked on the B color. In the, on the B color, it is incorporated into the normal stitch count. I will show you in a minute when we work with the B color. Okay, but on the A color, where do we work that stitch? So you see the loop there? You're going to yarn over. You don't work into a chain of this loop. You just work into the loop itself. You yarn over and you insert the hook into the loop itself. And that is your outside border stitch. It is neither a front or a back stitch, it is just an outside border stitch, and all it is, is a double crochet. That is all it is, okay? Other designers have other terminology for the stitch. Some call it an outside stitch, some call it a just a double crochet. They will end their, their, their row A with DC. Um, there, there are different terminologies, but they all explain it in their stitch notes or in their pattern notes. Like I said, in my patterns, I call it an OBS, outside border stitch. That just made more sense to my brain. So hence the term. Okay, so you will work that stitch into that space, into the loop itself and not necessarily into any of those chains. Because we're at the end of the row, what do we do? Three chain, or you can do four as is the norm. And I like to put a stitch marker there to keep everything in place. Okay, that is then the end of what would be, if this were a real pattern, row 2A. So now let's look at row 2B. Take that marker out. Our three chains already there from the end of row 1B. Okay, and let's do a couple of back stitches with your B color. Now, don't make the mistake of working into this window over here or through this window over here. Because you, if you do that, you are automatically going to be working into that stitch and you don't want to do that because it's going to mean that you're putting two stitches into the same space, okay? You want to work through the second window. And I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay, chain one, yarn over. You're gonna go through the next window. And here you actually are, because you're working into the green, you're pulling the stitch to the back. You're taking the stitch to the back of the work. Remember, back stitch, front stitch has nothing to do with the right side of the work or wrong side of the work. 
the wrong side of the work is facing me, but I'm doing back stitches towards the other side, away from me. So rather think of it like this. Back of the stitch means, or back stitch means push the stitch away from me. Front stitch means pull the stitch towards me. Okay, so we'll do some back stitches. And it is really just quite simple. Yarn over to the back. Complete your double crochet and chain one. Let's do some front stitches. So it's yarn over. Yarn over to the front. And remember that earlier I said, don't make the mistake, when, especially when you do front stitches. This mistake comes in a lot when you do front stitches by doing this. Picking up the green and picking, picking up the color B and picking up the color A and then working around both of them like this. That is incorrect. You want to work the color independently from the, of the color, the one color independently from the other. So it's yarn over. And there you go. So it's yarn over, insert the hook, pop it to the front. These are front stitches that I'm doing now. Just some of front stitches. Okay, yarn over, insert the hook. We'll do some more back stitches. Yarn over, insert the hook into the back. Okay, yarn over through the window, pull the stitch to the back. Now, a lot of people say, does it matter, they ask, does it matter if I stitch through both loops of the double crochet or if I only manage to pull one loop through. I don't think it matters. Some prefer that you pull both. I know I'm one of them. I prefer in my own work to catch both loops of the of the stitch like that. If though some people you only manage to pull one through, you know, no one's gonna see that. Really, no one's going to see it. And if you do it, if it's a noun again, like I said, who's going to use a magnifying glass to your work? Okay, so we're doing some front stitches now again. Oops. And then we'll do a back stitch. And again, because the green is automatically lying on the back, when you're doing your back stitches, you can just really just push the, the uh, previous color forward and have access to those stitches automatically. Now, what do we do with the last loop of the B color? So that loop, remember I told you there's no OBS on your B color. That stitch is normally incorporated in the pattern in the last couple of stitches for that pattern. So in this case, we're doing two, four, six, seven back stitches. So that will just be number seven. And we again, we don't go into the chain. We just go into the loop. If you look at that, we just went into the loop. And we're going to do our three chain to turn. On the B color, this color or that loop forms the inside border. But there's no instruction on the pattern for a stitch for the inside border. The stitch for this is normally incorporated into the last couple of stitches on the pattern. So like I said, in this case, it was uh, seven back stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and that then would be the end of rows 2a and 2b. Who knows what kind of pattern is being formed here at the moment, but let's go. We're going to do two more rows so that you can see another uneven row, or you can see an uneven row, and another even row, and then we will discuss the pattern in further depth. Right, we've now done rows 1a and b, and rows 2a and b. We've learned how to do back stitches and front stitches. We're now going to do row three. Now, row one A and B, even though row one is an uneven numbered row, it is your foundation row. So therefore it is very different to the future uneven numbered rows of the project. Row three, from row three onwards, you will notice on your pattern that I tell you that your color B, I tell you where your color B should be lying. So in this scenario, your color B, which is your green, should be lying to the front of your work. Now, remember I said earlier, if you finished the last row correctly, then your B color should automatically be in the spot where it's supposed to be. You wouldn't need to do anything. So in this case, it's an une uneven numbered row, row three, your color B must be lying to the front of your work, and in this case, it is. So you're going to start with color A, which is your pink. And we're just going to do a couple of arm stitches again. Now, again, we don't work into this area here because then you're working one stitch into another stitch and creating two stitches in the same spot. Okay, you start there, here. So we're going to do a front stitch. And let's do a few more front stitches. So you're gonna yarn over, remember, pop him to the front like that. And yarn over and pop him to the front, pop him through the window. Oops, like this. And yarn over and pop it to the front. Yarn over and pop him to the front. Let's do a back stitch. Yarn over and we're going to push him to the back. So just think of it as pop to the front, push to the back. Okay, yarn over and push to the back. Remembering to do your chain one in between every double crochet. Yarn over and push to the back. Let's do a front stitch. Yarn over and pop him to the front. So you're popping him through the window like that. Yarn over and pop to the front. Yarn over and push to the back. Let's do a back stitch. Let's do two back stitches. Another one to the back. I will be very surprised if this forms an actual picture. Okay, yarn over and to the front. Now you can see here, these pink ones already lying in the front, which means there's no popping involved. You just do double crochets into the pink because they're already in the front for you. Okay, and let's do one to the back. And let's do two to the front. Let's do one to the back and one to the front. Oops. Okay, 
now we come to the end of row three and again we have remember the outside border stitch now sometimes it gets hidden so don't forget about it um, well you can't if you're following your pattern because you will know that you haven't done it it is this loop over here remember you don't stitch into the chain or anything like that you just go into the chain space into the loop so it's yarn over into the loop and do your outside border stitch or otherwise known as OBS. Three chain and your row 3A is done. And you're going to put a stitch marker there just so that nothing unravels. Okay, now we're going to do row 3B. So you'll also notice on patterns that row 3B or any of the B rows, sorry, don't tell you where your B color should be lying. But that's logic because there is not, no, there's nothing here to tell you to make it lie to the front or the back. It, there's, it's open because your color A has moved across, which leaves your color B free to be worked. Okay. So the instruction for where your color B should be is only right at the start of the row when you start row A. So again, color B, we're not going to work here because there's already something there. Your three chain, oh, I'm twisted. Your three chain from before is sitting there. I'm gonna yarn over and let's do a front stitch here. And then let's do another front stitch and we're popping it to the front. And Pop him to the front and you can see I'm working, remember, color A into color A, color B into color B. Never the, never the one into the other. Okay, <clears throat> let's do a few back stitches. Push this to the back. And let's do a few front stitches now. Okay, and let's do another front stitch, popping to the front. You will see that sometimes when, when the color you're working with is automatically lying to either the front or the back, you don't need to pop it or push it. It is already there for you, so you will just work it as a normal double crochet. And sometimes you need to pop it. Other times you need to push it. And then there are times like now where you don't need to do either, you just work it to the back. Okay, we're heading to the end of the row. Now again, I'm just doing all stitches. We're not forming any particular pattern because we just want to get you used to the technique. Remember, this is now color B. There's no outside back stitch. There's no OBS. The last few stitches, the last stitch is incorporated into the instruction for the last few stitches. So in this case, let's do three fronts. So it's one, two, and number three will be into the loop that is created there, that loop there, into that loop that is created by your chain three when you turn. And you put in a stitch mark. So I want to show you again how your borders are being formed on the edges. This is your outside border that is formed by your outside border stitch, your OBS. This is your inside border. see it on the other side as well. The 
you see it clearer on this side. Okay. Hey guys. If you're interested in following me on Instagram or joining my Facebook group for interlocking crochet, whether you're a beginner or you're interested in more patterns, the links are below in the description.